Yeah, here we are, ready for a uh, another live stream. Uh, and to start us off, well, the first thing I'm going to get on the uh, live stream myself, so I can check everything's working okay. Uh, you may notice it might look a little bit different, playing around with a bit of uh, a bit of the lighting. So um, trying to get things a little bit more almost in the spotlight, and uh, we got a little little cut out to do first off it's a little tulip shape and if I explain the background in this one it's because I'm making this spoon here and it's a question of what happens when it goes wrong one of the most frequent questions that we get asked is what happens when it goes wrong yeah we got a little, little... okay so just checked everything everything seems to be working fine um, yeah so <laughs> what happens when it goes wrong well when I was working on this one here as you can see, I ended up with a big hole in the middle because one of the tulips I made a bit of a mistake on. I thought, well, what can I do? And uh, I thought, I know what we can do. We can cut out another little tulip and put it in its place. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So straight into it. Let's get cutting. Uh, any thoughts, any questions, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think in terms of the lighting. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I was like doing something different, so I thought it was a bit different, so that's what we're doing. Here we go, let's get cutting. the pierce work on that little one. We check it on the back as well as we always do just to make sure it's cutting out nicely. Yeah and that all seems to be going fine. What I thought see is I'd cut out three at the same time and it'll be great for doing some other little projects as well possibly. So possibly I don't know a brooch or a little piece of jewellery something like that I thought it would be nice to do it like that as well.
again, check it all on the back, see if we got a clean cut. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And now we're gonna work our way around the other side and cut that completely away. Uh, one thing I was gonna talk about as well today, uh, and that is um, copyrights. Yeah, somebody put a comment up yesterday. It was quite interesting. They were asking us, we'd made some cartoon characters, that sort of thing. Excuse me, and they were asking us about copyright. Uh, what do we do? Do we uh, pay royalties to Disney or do we take a chance? Uh, answer that one, simple one. If you're making it for yourself, it comes under the umbrella of fan art. And so there's no royalties to pay because I'm not making any money out of it. If you were doing it commercially and selling them, then you've got more of a problem because you're you're in the realms of intellectual property. You're, you're well, you're in copyright law. Um, but if you're only making it for your own enjoyment, a completely different thing. It's there's nobody to nobody to pay. You're only you're only making it as a bit of fun. And what I do is I make those characters and I keep them on display at the workshop. So yeah, in regards to that one, just to sort of um, re-emphasise. What I was saying in, in my reply, if you are making it, if you're thinking of making characters like that and then you're going to go and sell them, then yeah, you, you have to be paying royalty and giving a percentage to the copyright owner. And basically, you have to have permission to, to do that. But if you're only making it as a little bit of a hobby and a bit of fun, yeah, completely different different thing. Um, so yeah, any questions on that front, yeah, get, give, give us a shout. Is the first little part of this repair job, this retrieval, uh, is that we've cut out our little um, our little tulip that will be inserted into there. Next thing I'm going to check then is the thickness. If we need to thin it down much, now it shouldn't be too bad. And for it to slot into place, we've got to decide how far up we got to. We've got to mark it. So that's what I'm going to decide now, is how far up that is going to go. Um, let's just grab a pen. So it slides into position. That's what we want it to do. I'm going to have it, so it's just touching there and there. So let's just mark it with a pen and just cut it along there. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now cut the spoon. So this is basically as well, what we're highlighting is if something goes wrong, which, you know, let's be honest about it, we're making quite a, a few things in wood and we're gonna demonstrate some of the other things we're gonna make. Um, yeah, you're making different items in wood. Not everything's gonna go right every single time. You're not gonna have a, a perfect 100% out of 100%. So you have to be looking for little solutions and methods for, um, you know, dealing with a potential problem.
Okay, so we've erred on the side of caution when it comes to cutting that bit out. We haven't gone mad, because you can always take a little bit more off. Oh, we don't need to. Is that going to go into position correctly? Um, I'd possibly like to, we're not far off. What I'd probably do from here, there, if it goes in like that, yeah, I think that should be, yeah, here we are. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to glue that in position. Um, the best place I'm going to get a contact is on those two there. Should I just take out a little fraction? If I take a little fraction out of that corner there, it should just come across a little bit better. That's the theory. Or am I better off to just leave it tight? Yeah, I think I'll leave it tight like that. Now we take a fraction, a tiny, tiny. So there's a tiny little bit we're gonna take off the spoon now. But you need to go very carefully because we don't want to take off too much. And then we're back to square one. We need to take off there. And let's have a look. Yeah, so that is now in past ground. Yeah. So that now it's just so we can fill that gap so where i was working on it before we can now use some ca glue i'll do it straight away bear with me two seconds i'm going to go and get the ca glue um, and i'm going to stick that in position now what i'm going to demonstrate as well we need to tidy up the top of that one there and we're going to go on to we got we're working on a lot of different um, Christmas decorations. We've got the Robin one to cut out there, but also I've designed a new hanging decoration. Bit of a tulip theme going on here. So we've got a tulip just to cut out there. So we're gonna demonstrate cutting that out. Some of the other ones then, we've got all of our Christmas designs that we're working through. So we've got things like a candle, Christmas tree, a snowman. What we're finding, see, I know it's completely the wrong time of year, but we've just sold out of all of our Christmas tree decorations. We've marked out quite a few to make. And the other thing then, for doing uh, key rings, we add an initial like that, so we got those to cut out as well. So if any of you would like to see one of those specifically being cut out, let me know, and we'll do it. But I'll just get the CA glue, and we're gonna stick this in position. Right, so. First things first, what we're going to do is to put, we're going to decide, we always, when we're working with the CA glue, we decide whether we want to put the, um, which which part we're going to put the, the CA glue on and which one we're going to put the accelerant on. So I think in this case, it'll be easiest to put the CA glue on the tulip and the accelerant on the spoon. So the way we do that, little squirt of accelerant, just like so. And then, right, that's the thin CA glue, so that's a bit too fast flowing for what we want. So we're just gonna put a little dab of CA glue there and there. And then it goes somewhere around there, somewhere around there. And we're gonna have to work that now. Back into position. I'm gonna hopefully get a good contact. You don't want him to get stuck there. Come on now, there it goes. All right, because once that CA glue sets, it's pretty difficult for us to move it. So we try and get this right first of all. Probably best to check it on the back. Let's have a little look. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's happy days, I think. Yeah, so that's gonna be stuck in position. So we've now gonna glue that in position and then later on, I'm gonna carve that. I'll carve that for you to see, so it'll give you an idea then for how we deal with an issue like that. And what we're doing, see, we're actually making a feature of it because you've got a contrasting colored piece of wood, we're now making a, an actual feature of it, um, you know, and, and highlighting it as opposed to, I suppose it's sort of, um, it, you know, we, we call it a little mistake. 
Here we are. We call it what it is. It's a little mistake. And I guess it's, it's the same as a lot of things in life, isn't it? I think the best way to deal with a little mistake is to take ownership of it and, and actually say, right, what, what can we do to get the best out of it? So that's basically what we're doing. When we go across the bench as well, I'm going to put a bit of the thin CA glue just to fill in so we get a stronger contact as well. But I need to knock the top of that thin CA glue to finish that off. But for now, I'm going to carry on on the scroll saw. Right, so this one here, the issue that we had with this one, I carved it, I just wanted a little bit of a better shape on the flame of our candle. So that happens sometimes, you don't get the shape that you want, so you go back onto the scroll saw and try and get a nicer shape on it. So mask back on. Right, so what we wanted to, just a little bit of a nicer shape, more of a, a sort of curve, a reverse curve on that one. So I'm happy with that one. And we can now proceed on to our new design. Where have I put that down? Here it is, with our tulip. That plate, that can now come out because we're working, when we were working before, we were working with a very small piece of wood. And so you've got to be careful that that plate doesn't go and get um, in the way. Uh, uh, sorry, that it's basically the piece of wood is, is vulnerable to, to sort of tipping one way or the other. So if we can uh, keep that plate in position, it just makes life easier. Sometimes I find it easier doing the cutting with the plate in, sometimes it's easier without it. Those are the decisions that you make as you go along. I just noticed in there as well, um, have I got access to the comments? Um, if, if somebody could put a comment on there for me, that would be great because at the moment I haven't seen um, any comments. So if there are any uh, comments, oh, look at that. Oh, what? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, indeed. Right. Um, you'll leave it to, hello to the carver. Hello, Ken. Hello, everybody. I don't know what's been going on there, but I just... I just turned the comments on and off and uh, I thought there was nobody there. Uh, have you ever cut yourself on the scroll saw die? Um, you're probably looking at my finger. I haven't had any, uh, hello to the carver. Hello Ken and hello to Gabby. Thank you all for joining us and apologies for not saying hello personally earlier because uh, I couldn't see any comments. So I don't know what was going on there. Uh, you're probably looking at that. Well, basically it wasn't the uh, scroll saw for all the hours that I uh, work on it. It was the oscillator, swung round and hit into the side of my hand. And it, it's, it's, it's a lot better now, healing up quite nicely, but um, it doesn't look too clever, the, the nail. The nail looks a bit bad, so uh, we're keeping it covered up for now for, for the live streams. Uh, yeah, I, I, occasionally, you know, you might get a little nick. I know my, uh, my brother now, he's had a few nicks from the scroll saw. Personally, I, I've never had too many problems, but yeah, you can get you can get the odd neck from it. Uh, I'm looking here now. I was going to cut this out, all ready to go. But I haven't done all my pierce work. So that's a clever trick. There we are. I can do some of it, but I haven't done all my pierce work holes. So that's going to be uh, a bit of a problem. But anyway, we're going to do some cutting.
Sammy's with us. What happened to Nico? He has spots on him. Is he? Yeah, he's got little spots there. He got chicken box like you, is he? I feel like he had chicken box. I'm not sure. Maybe you had a good day in school? Yeah. Good, good. Right, what was I going to say, um, we need, is Grant there? I need to, I need to do some drilling, see? So what I'll do for now, we go on to the uh, Robin. See, what do you think of our Robin? No, he's not there. He's not there. Okie dokie. We'll have to leave it for now then. Um, so you can see, we've got a little bit of pierce work left over. So we've got two pieces of pierce work just at the top of the two lips and just by the side. What if we do it after the live stream? We may have to do it after the live stream because Daddy went and forgot to do it. So that's a bit of bad preparation. So apologies for that. Um, but there we are. Was everything all right in school? Yeah. Good man. Oh my goodness, did you get it back? Yeah. Good stuff. Right, we're going to carry on with the robin and we're going to get it cut out.
simple little items like this, see, simple projects, um, they, they're very much, they're always popular. Um, and we, we do, we, we make and sell, wow, lots and lots of these during the year. And that's, you know, the essence of um, what we do then in our workshop. Whilst we are making, I'll show an example here. Whilst we are making sort of more elaborate lead spoons, things like this one here, um, at the sort of same time, we're, we're working on all sorts of uh, little gift items. So especially now we're, we're coming out of COVID and things like that, we're getting a little bit busier in the workshop. Um, and that's what's happened to us is that all of the, uh, because we're, you know, we, we don't buy anything from wholesalers or anything like that. We make it all ourselves. We're finding like all of our Christmas decorations, we're, we're virtually sold out of them. Um, so anytime we sell anything, you, you, you're sort of trying to replace it. Strange for the time of year, I know, but it's the behind the love spoon, it's the, the sort of second most popular item that we actually make um, here, here at the workshop is Christmas decorations. And I'm just checking that there. Yeah, I'm looking at the lighting. I'm happy with it. I like it. Something different, and it just hopefully focuses the attention onto the uh, scroll saw cutting. When we go across to the uh, workbench as well, I'll show you all, I managed to get hold of another really good vintage gouge. It's a Herring Brothers this time. It's a number four and it's in fantastic condition. Uh, I even suspect that it may have come from the whoever owned the other one that we bought because the quality of the steel is excellent and the, the way it's been kept is is superb um so yeah i'll share that one with you all so you can see it
And normally at this stage, what I would do is I would actually use the band saw purely because it's quicker um, just to cut the surround and then the belt sander afterwards. But as we are demonstrating on the scroll saw, we carry on cutting. You okay, Sammy? Grant's is here. If you could ask him, there's a, two holes I need him to drill out. If you could have a look at that for me, that'd be great. Brilliant. Thank you, Sammy. Just two holes. Ah, oh, there we are. Here he comes. There we are. What I will do, I'll go on to another little project. I'm just going to hand that over. There's two, there's two little holes need drilling there. If you can find your way through. Um, Where do you want the holes drilled here? For the tulip. Just one at the top and one in the middle there. Only one at the top. Only one at the top, yeah. Uh, right, where's my next little project? Here it is. Uh, it's one of those. We hit something. There we are. So I just check, are we still? Um, you could do. Uh, just check that we're still, yeah, we still got it focused in the right place. Right, so what we're gonna do is, hello sir. Yeah, that's fine. That camera is not, not on at the moment. So don't worry about that one. You can have a sit there and you can pop the holes if you want to. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to cut around these letters and that will show you another little project that we do. For doing this one, I would suggest putting that plate back in position. There we are. That's grand. I'll just let you come back, back through. Okay. Afternoon, everyone. Here we are. Thank you for that one. Right, and we can cut out on I these ones here. The Brilliant. Well done, Sammy. Thank you, Grant. As you can see, we got three letter E cut out, just like so. And then we can show you again what we can use them to create. One that we demonstrated before, but just to give you an idea on the different things that we can do. Simple little projects that keep our workshop going.
okay? Yeah. Good man. It's just that she might have it wrong. We're getting, we're getting that. We're getting that. You okay? Yeah, My peppermint tea is there too. Fantastic. There we are, Sammy. We've done. It's warm. Good. That's how I like it. Who we got there? Um, we got D D W Danny or D W Denny. Sorry. Hello there. Hope all is well. Thank you for joining us. We're doing some simple little gift items. We got Sammy here with us. And yesterday was a big day for Sammy, wasn't it? What was yesterday? It was your... Birthday. That's right. And how old are you? Six. Six years old. That's right. So... The camera's still on. The camera's still on. Can you see? It's on there. Can you see? Yeah. Look at that. So it's showing us cutting out. And a couple of weeks back, Sammy, you had chicken pox, didn't you? Yeah. But what did you spend your week doing? You were carving, weren't you? So yeah, six um, years old and he knows how to cut. Holes out. Drilling holes, carving in the workshop. Popping yeah. the holes. Popping the holes when we put the the, the um, tape Helping on as well. The footballs. That's right. Make he, he did, he helped make us make key rings, football key rings, didn't you? All sorts. Right, so we're gonna get on and we're gonna cut out these shapes. What's this for? That's a capacitor, so it keeps running. What are we doing, what? What's he drink the tea? You got, I got to drink the tea now, haven't I? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll have a drink of my tea. We'll have a drink. No, this is actually more. 
perfect. So when we go from the scroll saw to the workbench, we'll have a drink of tea. And now yeah. what we've got to do, there's a little bit of where I, I reversed there, it jumped. So I've got to sort that bit out. We've got our three robins to carve, one, two, three. Um, and then we'll also get ready our three little tulips. Christmas tree decorations. I don't know, we're making Christmas decorations in, in May. This one's already carved. No, we've got a bit of work left on that. Three little tulips. What's the carver saying there? Let's have a check, Sammy. He said, uh, picked up two 16 foot church pews. Fantastic. Upholstered, so breaking them down is not for, no, it's a bit of a tricky little job. But um, what, wood is, what wood are they? A lot of them here in Wales, they're, they're pine, so not so good for working. But in England, you tend to get more um, oak ones. So better yeah, quality for, for working in. Uh, right, we're gonna go on the bench now. We're gonna do some work on the bench. Yeah, so yeah, what wood, what wood did you have from them? Let's have a look as well. We're gonna change over cameras. There we are. I'm gonna have a drink of my tea. Yeah, we're gonna have some, some nice of the tea. Nice and warm it is, Daddy. Nice and warm, perfect. There we are, it's right. It is on, don't touch that one. Otherwise, nobody will be able to see what we're doing. Yeah, it'd be good to know what, what wood you, you got out of the, the, the church pews. I'm gonna start off, right, that's the other thing I was gonna show everybody. Um, we've got a few jobs to show. The first one, just to show you, here we are. This is what we do when it comes to the key rings. Yeah, so, you the key ring. when it comes to the key rings, what I'll just do. The holes. That's right. Spot on. That's it. Sammy knows how to make them. So we've got we'd put an E on that one like so. And, then and we put an E on that one. Ball or just stick them down like so. Or cricket ball, something like golf ball. That's right. Anything like that, didn't it? Yeah. Ah, it's a mixture. Braces appear to be maple. Ah, nice, nice My stuff then. Eh? Harder the maple, but calves. I like it. Dad's not so keen. He finds it a bit too hard. Right, let's have a little look. Can you see my blue? Can you find my blue glue? Nah. Whereabouts? Nah. I drink. Oh, Sammy spotted it behind my drink. There we are. Right, so the first thing I gotta do is we gotta knock the top off this glue because um, I probably shouldn't be using that one. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you my new one. There you go. That's my new gouge, my brand new gouge. You got it, yes. You got it, yes. It came in the post, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a new gouge. It's a number four. We show you properly. Yeah, number four, prize medals. And you've got Herring Brothers, London on there as well. Careful with that tripod. And you've got the, I reckon that's the original handle and the original ferrule on there as well. Fantastic. 
because um, you're always taking a bit of a chance because you're looking at a picture and you never quite know what you're getting. I'm just looking at this one as well. Oh, that was an Addis made in Sheffield. It's just like made, made these little, made this for rugby balls. Yeah, that's right. We were giving out that's the rugby right. balls yesterday, weren't we, in the rugby? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what have we got on there? I'm still not 100% 100% sure about the bench itself. You make a little. Like, yeah, quite often it's difficult to tell until you actually get to the raw wood itself. Right, so let's have a look. You make an oven shape for a rugby ball yeah. and then you just mark it with stuff. Okay, so. Stuff that you want on so what we've done. What we've done, we put a little bit of extra, I put a little bit of extra CA glue just to try and get a strong contact. You need to spray things like that. Yeah. Just make the old gum shape for a rubber Make some different for it. What's yeah. your favourite one that we've done, Sammy? Well, I have the rugby ball or the football. <laughs> the rugby ball or the football, yeah? Who's your favourite too? We could do a cricket ball. You're playing cricket now as well? Because yeah. it's summer? Yeah, yeah. I went over the houses. You went over the houses? Yeah, the ball. Oh my goodness, you hit the ball over the houses. What I'll do as well, we'll just demonstrate that one there, the new gouge. Now that's interesting for me. Ooh, that one looks nice. It's not bad, but we need, we need Grams to have a look at that one for us before it's at its best. You do a bit of sharpening on that one. That needs a little bit of working on. It's not bad. Okay, Certainly a good gouge, but it needs a bit of attention when it comes to the sharpening. But we are making a rugby ball. Yeah. Where did we get a lot of the wood from where we made the rugby balls from? Do you know? No. No? That was where we gave them. It was in the rugby club in Narbeth. Um, I hate to do it, but you run the risk. Um, but I have to run. Don't forget to hit the... Oh, thank, you. thank you for the carver. Hope all is well. Yeah, hope you have a good week. And keep us updated. When you when you figured out what that wood is, be good to know. Yeah, we've got some things to make sure... It was... It was... A, it's what we... It's what the, they call Savina, isn't it? That was the wood? Yeah. And where is Savina from? Where's Savina from? It's from Pa's town, isn't it? Your Pa's town. Yeah. So who's your Pa? That's your abuelo, isn't it? In Spain. Yeah. So it's from the it's the woods from La Mancha in central Spain. So uh, we got some woods like darkish colour with some. Here we are. We got we we teach you important thing that they don't that, teach you in school. That wood. That one. Right, now that looks to me, that looks as if it could be, yeah, definitely on that side there. That is a piece of Iroko. Where do you think Iroko grows, Sammy? You know where it grows? It grows in West Africa. So it's a Western African timber, that oh, one. This one. Let's have a look. That's Savina. That's the, yeah, type of cedar from La Mancha in Central Spain. Oh, no. Next one, we got a little piece of mahogany. I look at that, that shows you how varied mahogany is because this wood at the back here is mahogany. That's a bit of ash and that's a piece of mahogany as well. So can you see how different the colors are, Sammy? Yeah, what else are you giving me? That one there. Now that one, the first thing when you see that one, the first instinct is to say it's a piece of oak, but it's not because it shows how easily you can be caught out. It's a piece of chestnut. And then that one there is the sapwood of the Savina. So again, from La Mancha. Yeah, we have a bit of oak. We, we, we use oak, them. don't we? Yeah, that's right. You've done some carving in oak. You've yeah. carved all sorts of different timbers, haven't you, Sammy? Yeah. Yeah. I've ash. Yeah. Ash, oak. You've done uh, fruit woods. Yeah. You've done chestnut yourself. Yeah. yeah. You've carved all sorts. So Sammy's been practicing carving from about the age of two. And here, that's when you first started two or three. carving. Two or three. 
I have got a video from when you were very, very young doing some carving. And we kept that one. We kept it for when you, you can see when you're older. There we are. So you can see what we're doing, where we made that mistake on the original, and well, what happened, see, Sammy, just to explain to everybody else as well, what happened is when we were carving, watch that doesn't move, that tripod or the cable. Um, when we were carving this one, the problem we had is that um, I went a bit hard and there was a, there were two, there were two um, tulips that are almost, they were sort of coming together and almost in the formation of kissing tulips. And I went a bit hard and I managed to break one of them. So unfortunately, if you've broken one, you've really got to take the two away because you lost the, the symmetry. So when I looked at it, it wasn't too bad. And dad said, and my wife, Yelly, she was saying, just leave it as it is. But I thought it would be better to fill the gap. My concern is always that when you have a larger gap, your eye tends to go to the gap as opposed to the design. We got all sorts, haven't we, that we're working on. We're busy, yeah, busy making stuff. We got some of these ones for you. That it's... little spoon's a piece of oak, Sammy. Sammy's it's... just checking what oh. I've got there that I'm working on. Right, so what we're doing, see, is we're, we're, we're just making this, we're shaping it so it'll, it'll feel, oh dear, we dropped the gouge. We dropped the gouge, Sammy. What we're doing is shaping everything so it gives us... Oh, thank you, Gabby. Hope all is well. Yeah, some nice demonstrations. Enjoy. Always enjoy seeing you back on the scroll saw. Anybody uh, looking for different demonstrations back yeah, making the toys? Check out Gabby's channel and the carver as well if you're looking for different demonstrations of what others do. Yeah. Well, right, this, so you got that yeah, shape. Has got that wood there. We need to source a, a bit of it. You're going to do some work on there, are you? Yeah, so am I. Because we're going to get the saw coming through with some. Um, so as you may be able to tell, see, we have Sammy in and around the workshop, and he's learning how to do all sorts of different things. He's teaching himself how to do the different stuff. What? There we are. Yeah, he's fine. Do you want to tighten that one up in the vise for him? Do you want to help him with the... It's... It's Yelly's just come in, my wife, just to check on Sammy. Oh. You say hello to everyone. Hello. No, Mum, you don't just get that. Okay. There we are, so you can see. There we are. So Sammy's going to have a little go with the coat pencil. Exactly, so I'm going to carve, but I just put it in. If I get chance, now we'll have to put the camera on him so you can see him working. There we are. Find him a nice piece of wood there. I need to have a go at scrolls on the coping floor. I need to carve. I need to So you can see as we carve it, it very much turns the, what we're looking to do is to try and create an effect where anybody looking at the spoon um, will very much see the new tulip that I grafted in. They will very much see it as part of the design as opposed to something that's been added after as it has done. So that's the... That's the hope to create that sort of effect. So we got the one there we're just shaping. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There we are. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just down like so. And once we've carved everything in the one direction, we will work on the opposite direction as well. Just a little bit more out of there. Just like so. Just like so. 
Right, turn it round in the vines. You might be able to hear in the background there, Sammy's getting that coping saw going. How's it coming on, Sammy? Good. Good, good. See, I think I'm halfway. Right? Halfway? Because I snapped it a bit on um, I got in place um, when I started it. And, and yeah. Right. It snapped it when I. A bit broke off, did it? That's all right then. As long as you meant to do it. So as you can see, we've got a good, a good area where it's contact between the new piece and the main body of the spoon. Lost of gas. Shape it all round. Whoop, seconds out. What happened there, Sammy? The block fell. The block fell. Really me. Yeah, I snapped it off. Did you get the job done? There we are. Good stuff. But the block fell. But the block fell. Right, so we're just cutting down into there. Oh, why is there a hole? There's a hole in the block. There's a hole there, is there? Yeah, there's a hole in the block. A hole or a split? A hole. A hole. Oh, yeah. uh, tomorrow, oh, I hope to finish the project I started a few days ago. Uh, I didn't feel so well today because a year ago I was operated on my left kidney for renal cancer. My left kidney was, oh, well, now I feel better, but I don't give up. Life goes on. Good stuff. Well, it sounds like you've uh, you've done well, Gabby. And it's great to see what you're doing. And I, I, I hope, uh, off a bit, I hope you continue big, doing well, Gabby. It's big on you. And it's always it's great. Big. It's a big piece. Yeah, wow. Wow, you're, you're doing well there. Now it's well just back from that, you have to do something on there. Um, similar to, to my, my, friend, my friend's dad, very similar indeed. And he's uh, he's recovering well, well too. Oh, I knocked it on the floor. Sorry, Sammy. Yeah, but anybody who hasn't seen Gabby's channel and the Carvers, definitely well worth checking it out. They're making all sorts of different things, using all sorts of different methods. Wood turning and all sorts. But now I'm glad I'm glad you're doing well, Gabby. I'm glad you're doing well and I hope you feel uh, better again soon. Yeah, fair do you. Glad you are feeling better. No, 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 you're you're welcome, Gabby. And it is always great to have you uh, have you involved and have you run the live stream. And around the, the channel, and it's a pleasure to be able to share what you do, making some nice stuff. Enjoyed seeing all the different the different designs that you've made on the with the wood turning, and of course with the uh, the scroll sword as well. Right, we're on to there we are. So what we've done, see, we've turned a disaster and made a feature of it. Um, and that's what you could do, see? So instead of sort of despairing and thinking, oh my goodness, I've messed it up. What, this big boat here? We've got a boat. We made that as a Noah's Ark. You want to show? Look at that. Sammy wants to show you all our little, our Noah's Ark. There we are. Oh, we demonstrated that a long, long time ago. You got one of your chicken pox, is that irritating you? Mm. Here we are. It's just the top of it, fell off. Oh, it's Hoshi. Hoshi's in the house. Sorry I'm late. You made it to the license. You did indeed. 
we're just showing everybody what we do when it goes wrong. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, so what happened with this one? I was carving away, doing a grand job, enjoying myself, and um, I was talking. I got a bit distracted and I went straight through and lost, lost one of my tulips. And unfortunately, because it was done sort of symmetrically, I had to take away another tulip as well. So in this place, I've made a feature out of it and put a different coloured tulip in this place. So there we are. What happens when it goes wrong? Well, you don't panic. You make the best you can out of it. Right, let's have a little look. So you can see, what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to put this spoon on the belt sander. But we've now got a tulip. So I want to take off where I, I, I made a bit of a mess with the, uh, with the glue. But uh, I think it works quite nicely. Nice little tulip in the center. Nice contrast. You're going home? Well, thank you for your help. Do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Bye. Good boy, Sammy. We'll have to get you on the live stream, show them what you do. Sammy's doing some great stuff. Hope you're do all doing good. Yeah, well, all is good with ourselves and we hope everything is good with everybody else. Um, I mean, to finish off, I could either do the, I, I, make, I might make, make our both to finish off. I, I'll start off, we do another two bit. So this is a new decoration, new little hanging decoration that we're working on. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna, just do a little bit of carving. So these decorations, um, as always, we, uh, we don't pull any punches, we tell it as it is. We sell these in the workshop. I think we get five, five pound 50, I think. Um, for for each, if memory serves. But I, I'll be honest with you, it's not my. I, I make the stuff. I don't always. Uh, I'm not always up with the the pricing and that sort of thing. But I think it is off the top of my head. It's five fifty. Um, I will check out tomorrow what I missed. Brilliant. Yeah. No. Great. Um, and thank you, Gabby. And remember as well. Yeah. Everyone, check out what Gabby's doing because it's always great to see the demonstrations of what Gabby's making. Great channel, as is the carvers. Right, so you can see, we're just working our way around like so, and down like so. So we get those stop cuts. This new gouge that we had a few weeks ago, that's one of my favorite ones to work with at the moment. Got a really nice edge on it. Thanks to Thomas the Woodcarver, sharpening that one. And it's cutting very, very nicely. So we're just gonna carve that down. So it's just to give it more of a, a three-dimensional feel. Just like so. And this is in essence what I am focused on is using um, using the different tools as in mainly the scroll saw and the hand carving together to create all sorts of little gift items. Now what I'm working out with this because there's only we're only earning they're a five pound item. It's working out how much carving is the right amount of carving for an item of this nature. So that's all part of the process. Is seeing. And then you also look to see, well, is, is it viable? Because if you end up spending too much time carving on a piece, you may really like a piece and you may find pieces sell really well it's always a challenge because you, you, you do, you get pieces that will sell very, very well. But you look at them and you're thinking, well, yeah, they're selling well, but the price point is an issue because there's too much work in them to justify making them. Right, so we've got that there. And we're just working on can cut that down just a little bit. 
I mean, anybody interested in the sort of business side of things, those are popular designs. Birds, flowers, Christmas. For ourselves, because we're in Wales and because we are, we go under the name of the Love Spoon Workshop. The Love Spoon is a, a big, uh, a big point of, a point of interest for ourselves. Um, and then you've got things like the candle holders do well for us. Letter racks, desk tidies. Truth is, because there's so little made in the UK now by hand, anything that we make, there is a market for, because you just can't get handmade stuff any longer, so. And another thing then, when it comes to making something like this, what you quite often find is that when you make the first one, you're, you're feeling your way as you go. And then as you make a few and you, you start to learn the carving, that's when you start to really earn more money from it because you, you learn the process, you learn the methods by heart and it just gets that much easier. Um, yeah, it gets that much easier to, to do. Right, so we turn him round. Like so. And then this one. And the difference. Oh, nice bit of music in the background. Like, glad you like it. Depends on the song. We put it on there to try and create a nice. Nice bit of background and what they call it, ambiance. I'm getting very posh. Right. Let's have a look. Nearly finished on carving it in this direction. I think once we get the once this will be a a viable one to make once we get to grips with our method. For how we're going to go about carving it? It's taking me a little bit longer this first time, but that's quite a normal. A little bit longer to carve this one than I would hope it will take in the future. You're sort of working it out in your head as you're carving um, how long it will be taking. If we can speed it up by 10, 20%, 10, then that'll be a good little item for us. Just re-establishing that separation there for the petal, like so. Now, one thing I do do, yeah, I'm going to do it in this case as well, is that we just take a little bit of the, we take a little bit of the sharpness away, like so. Just go around the outside taking that sharp edge away. Awesome. And then turn it around. Do the same at the top. Taking away 
just a little bit to create that frame. Back on the sanding, shape a little bit of a sort of finishing sandpaper just to shape around that tulip. And that is a new little gift item, a little tulip themed hanging decoration. As I said, anything with flowers, um, birds, nature, anything along those lines always sells well in our workshop. And for finishing off the demo, we showed you a repair job, we showed you how we sometimes have to go back over things with that candle. We've shown you how to make these ones here. And the last one, we carve a robin to finish things off. We showed you those key rings as well. There you go. That's the tulip. So just that. Learning those wood carving skills, that's why we always recommend it. It just gives things um, just a little bit extra. So with the scroll saw, of course, you can get that flat, but if you can just learn a few little basics when it comes to the wood carving, you can really take things up to another level. Right, so we start off working on the beak, just like so. And whilst it may not seem appropriate for the time of year working on Christmas decorations, we've actually had the robin in the, in the shed in the back. So it's, uh, it's a friend of ours now, the robin in the workshop. It's taken up residence here. So we call it a celebration that uh, decided to move in. The little robin decided to move in there. Build a nest. Right, that's the first first part of the process. We then go on to our stock cuts for our wing. And the same on the back of the wing too. And again, with all these different jobs, it's all about getting those levels. So deciding which bits you're going to push down and which bits you're going to bring out. Yeah, so we just got that round like so. And then from there, those legs, they get pushed down. I guess we could give them a little bit of shape. So we go across like so. Stop cuts to mark everything out. using a variety of different gouges as, as we can. It's creating that effect of like a 3D image when you're only working really see in two dimensions. There we are, so just pushing everything back just a little bit. And then, right, the main thing then, yep, seconds out. Too many gouges on the bench. So you're gonna shape the body. And you can see this is where, because it's something I'm used to carving, carved it many times before, you sort of, you cut with a little bit more confidence. You take away a little bit more wood because you know, you know where you're looking to get to. So you're not as worried. You're not figuring out the method as much as you're going along. That's him. And then we've got to cut into that wing. Let's 
cutting on that one there and the cutting into that line. Like so. Turn it round once more. So what we're creating, see, we're shaping the wing, but the, the wing has got to be the highest point. So when you look at the bird, the, the thing that's at the front, you know, the wing is on top of the body. So the body has to sort of disappear behind the wing. So that's what we're creating that effect of. Fair amount of work still for £5.50, but there we are. We can make a few of them in an hour, so not too bad. That's why we use methods like the stack cutting. So you can justify doing it because uh, there's no easy way of doing these things. And it takes as long as it takes. And there's a little bit of skill involved too. That's it. All right, that gets rid of all of that. We just shape a little bit more on the body. Just like so. add in the details. So the first thing to add the detail, sand it all over, get a nice smooth base to work from. And all in all, we got a nice afternoon in the workshop. Because whilst it's our work, we love doing what we do. And it's great to be able to share what we do. And there's not many jobs you can do now where you're you're making something, you're producing something from uh, from your day. You get that job satisfaction, and you get the uh, the nice part then where somebody will come along and decide, I like that, I want to buy that, and they'll buy what you've made. And that's a, a lovely thing to be able to do. I think somebody likes it enough to buy it. There we are. Uh, right, we've got, yeah, that one there. Just a little bit of detail on the beak and the last little bit. The last cut of the demo. Oh no, we, we can do the surround as well. This will be the last little. Round like so. Turn it round in the vice. Just to finish off that little bit of framework. a successful afternoon creating in the workshop. There we are. Hopefully that has been interesting. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for continuing to support us as well. So you can see just a simple 
simple little bit of cutting and carving to create some hanging decorations. We've got that love spoon as well that we've sorted out and filled the gap and covered up my mistake. And we had those key rings, which I don't know where we put, but they were these ones here and we had that letter E to go on them. There you go, hopefully that's interesting. Thank you all again for joining us. Hope you have a great week. Remember, check out Gabby and the Carver's channel if you haven't already. They got some great uploads on there. And all going well, we will be back again with another live stream and video uploads.